Hi, hi. Uh, long lamp to or Shane. Uh, come with a quick unboxing review style video um, of Airfix's one is to send me two Hawker Typhoon One B, which I'll be adding to. It'll be going along with my Airfix Tiger for um, Russell Goslin's uh, D-Day group build, and I'll be depicting uh, the Tigers from uh, Heavy Panzer Battalion 103 getting hit up by the RAF as they move towards Kong. Um, so uh, we'll get started on this um, in box review. As you can see, it's a really nice box art, you know. And it's kind of it was this box art that inspired me to actually um, to build my own diorama. So painting instructions on the back, as we can see. So it's one aircraft uh, number two two number two six six squadron second tactical air force royal air force Holland Germany. It doesn't have the invasion stripes, so I'm just going to paint them in and just use the decals as is. They are painted by Cartograph, which is great. Uh, we'll get to them in a minute. Uh, Oh, before we get properly stuck in, I have a quick update. Um, the watermark that's been out of my video should be gone now because I found the same program in a smaller package d done by that website that doesn't have the watermark. Well, so they claim. So we'll see. Or it'll just be lying to me again. But, uh, okay. Let's have a look. This is, um, I believe this is a new release, uh, not a, a retooling. Um, overall impressions is it's a nice kit. There's actually some very nice little bits and pieces. So we'll start with the instructions. Again, your standard Tamiya job or Tamiya Airfix instructions, kind of classic to this point. Um, actually, much clearer than usual. Much clearer than the Tigers. Um, uh, the Tigers instructions. So they put a bit of effort into this one, right? Um, a cockpit is included, which is good because now airfix are notorious for just giving you a blank area and hoping the pilot will hide it. Uh, there are exactly how many steps? 18 steps. Uh, a lot of options for weapons loadouts for the anti-tank rockets, bombs, um, open close canopy, uh, landing gear up down, the standard and also which is very cool you can you can actually have the, the 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 gun base exposed, which is pretty nice, very nice um, piece of detail. We have to cut into the model. So here we have the wings. Uh, nice detail, very nice engraving. No flash, no pin marks. Um, actually, seems to got the engraving more to scale with this model actually, which is very nice. Um, very crisp plastic as well, you know. I really like it. So here are the wing sections, the um, pylons for the rockets are quite well done as well. They're not just blobs of plastic, they actually have a bit of definition to them, which is always a good thing. The staves are quite nicely done as well. Some nice rivet work and uh, panel lines. Uh, the we these are the uh, folded wings, or folded wings, folded um, landing gear struts. Uh, nicely enough done. It appear a little bit thick plastic wise but when it's mounted into the fuselage you won't even notice. So on to the next brute. Um, should I should have said at the start uh, you get four grey plastic sprues, one clear canopy piece which is in its own plastic bag which is always a good thing for fence damage and a small decal sheet. Not small but like a um, decal sheet for one aircraft and all the stenciling. So uh, here we have the main fuselage half. It's a lovely looking aircraft. I love the big air intake at the front of it. Makes it look really cool like almost kind of steampunky like you know it's a beautiful looking airplane. Um, this was a very important aircraft as well in Normandy. It um, was, the, the, was one of the reasons why the eyes were so effective because this aircraft used to terrify the Germans. Uh, I'll draw your attention actually to the side of the cockpit and as you can see they've molded on detail which is nice. That's uh, good. It's good that Airfix is doing this now. Because anyone knows of anything ninety post anything pre two thousand and eight or nine Airfix before Hornby took them over. They were very old kits and there weren't a lot of detail in them, especially in the interiors. But they have they're really pushing themselves now and it's great to see them because I love support Airfix because it was the first model brand I ever worked with and I was well I wasn't built from. So I have a nostalgic connection to them. Um, 
So nice little detail there. Uh, again, the panel lines are quite well done, very well done actually, if I do say so. Some lovely little rivet heads and everything in it. Beautiful. The bombs actually too are quite well defined. Um, they're simple. I think they're. I, I say they're probably maybe five hundred pounders. I'd say. Because you get two and she'll a thousand pound bomb capa um, lift capacity, so they're probably two five hundred pounders. So they do horrendous damage. The prop, is, prop is basic. Not much to say there. See there, should I say? Here's the um, landing bay, landing bay wells. There's actually some lovely little detail in this. Um, unfortunately, I'm having aircraft on flight, so they, these will be closed. But there's actually molded in wiring, which I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah. Just down here. From this little, I think these are the um, compressed air um, bottles to open and close the, uh, the landing gear. I'm not an aircraft model, a lot of this is kind of new to me. Um, here you have the up part of the cockpit. So I think these are the two foot pedals, which, if they are, they're very large for this scale. So they appear to be like pedals. Um, we'll find out as we get building, as in like when we get up to that, that part. Okay. Um, now here's one of the nicest features to this kit, in my opinion. The um, the two Hospano cannon bays are open. So these are 20 millimeter cannons. I think I believe these are Hospanos. The same the same type cannons the later Spitfires have. So you'll recognise the big barrels that it will be very reminiscent of um, things from Spitfire Mark III onwards had Hispanos. It's also a really cool name. Um, as you can see, it's a bit basic, but it was actually um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as sharp as say a photo etch like Airy set or some or not or a resin set, but for for airfix this is quite sharp. Um, you see like machine gun belts, the wires. I think that they're re responsible for. Um, they're the command wires when your man pulls down on when the pilot pulls down on the truck on the uh, trigger. I think these are what pull. You can see actually these little cords. I think they're for pulling the triggers. So that's a very nice little detail. I'm I'm very impressed. You have I have to give uh, airfix top notch for that like top marks. Unfortunately, I'll be closing this down. And if you compare compare to the um, the uh, the instructions you have to cut into the wings. So, if you are going to be exposing the gun bays, you're going to have to take your time. Um, these, I believe, are the exposed. Pl um, these go with the, the bomb, the gun bays, and these will be like the doors that the ground crew pulled up to inspect the weapons. So, some lovely detail. Also, I know some like very like premium premium companies that don't bloody do this. They've weighed, they've weighed the wheels. Now that is a nice touch. That means they're listening to model makers saying that, you know, we prefer the wheels have that weighed down appearance and they've done it. That is nice. So again top not top marks again to um Airfix. The pilot is like the old pilots used to get in their kits. It's nothing too crazy there. Um he's well enough detailed. I would wish that they'd get into the habit of maybe having the pilot a bit more defined and having his mask across his face. Um, if, I, if the, if the humour takes me, I might actually pop into the same shop where I got these and buy um, Ravel's RAF ground crew and pilot set because they are beautiful and it's, I'll, I'll just cut them to fit into the cockpit. Uh, the instrument panel is a bit basic here, but a decal will fit across it. So And you're not going to see it anyway, it's a very narrow cockpit. Not on this scale, you know, so I'm not going to go, oh my god, there's no detail on it. You're not going to be able to bloody see it anyway. Um, what else are we looking at? So that's that. Um, the last screw is the underside of the wings, molded in one piece. So again, some lovely rivet details, some lovely lines, very, very nicely done. Tiny, I mean, tiny bits of flash. You'd almost be able to take off running your finger over it. Tiny little bit of flash on the gun ports for the Hospanos. But again, it's so light that you just literally one run, gentle run, with no pressure over your with your sander, and that's gone. So it's it, nothing, nothing, um, nothing crazy. The rockets, I think these are three inch RB6 actually. Huh? I will, I will cheat and look at the uh, yeah um, RP3 rockets. So these are the RP3 rockets, 
which will have devastated German armour and infantry during Normandy. Um, these are okay. Again, the, the casting plugs are a bit big, so some careful cleanup is going to be needed. This is one of the exhausts, or the radiators, and yeah, there's a bit of flashing on that, so that's going to take a bit of cleanup. Um, some of the cockpit parts, the, the the seat's actually nicely textured. And then it, it appears that these parts here, I don't know, that, that, they're, 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 these, aren't, these are a bit of a letdown. It's like they took the, these pieces from here, from an older kit, and put it back into it. So, the, yeah, it's a bit rough detail-wise. Especially um, the, oh, the pilot tube. I think, that's what it, I think that's what it's called. Please uh, forgive me if that's the wrong name for it. That is just a, a feckin' hunk of plastic. So, yeah, if I can find one from my spares box, from some of my older fighter builds, I'll um, seek my salvage one out of it. If not, I'll just use it as is. Um, the bomb hard points nicely again picked out, some nice panel lines on that. Okay, we'll have a look at the uh, photo, uh, the decals, which I have had sealed away in a plastic bag, in like a Ziploc bag to protect them. So I think now, where do I put them? Uh, okay, it's not that one. I'm assuming this one's not. Bear with me. I didn't lose them, did I? So you get to dampen the shed, so the protective decals, I have to lock them away into a Ziploc bag. That's the tigers. I've been here, just can't see it. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, there. So these, sorry for that delay, but again, if the damp gets at your 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 decals are gone. So, so like, and like, I work in a shed, and you see what I mean? Like, it's a shed. It is damp. So then here's my my bench. So yeah. So you can imagine, like, oh, I have this electric heater for heat, and yeah. So again, I know that's a bit off from the review, but that's just a point to note: is that if you're working in a colder, damp environment, um, you use block bags to protect your decals. I'm, I'm sure that's just common sense, but just just to say. So anyway, back onto this area, lads. Um, yeah, the decals are cartographs. They're nice. They're a little bit raised. And the CBM register, but the film, especially on the large, watch, yeah, there. If you see where the roundels are here with the tactical markings, you can see the film. So I might, I what I'll probably end up doing is I'll end up cutting these out separately, and cutting as close to the, to the numbering as possible, because I built this with their. I ran into the same problem with those large um, film surfaces with the um, Mark, the Spitfire 72 scale Spitfire Mark 1 by Airfix as well. Great kit. Again, cartographed detailed um, decals, but it was just because of the large film surfaces it silvered slightly. So to avoid that in this build, I was actually going to cut these out separately when it comes to the decaling of the model. Um, so that's that. Uh, so that's really it. Um, I'll just give you a quick update on the, the, the King Tiger, or the Cunnage Tiger, or Cunnigs. I've begun to add the Simrit and texture to the, the gun barrel for putting a bit of soot and the gun mantlet. So, you can see that's just a bit of paint, a uh, paintbrush just knocked off it, nothing to worry about. And I'm working on, on the hull now and the rear hole. So, we're getting there. Considering this is smaller than 72, like this is a, a Warhammer model in comparison. It's almost as bigger than it, like. So this is uh, very small, fine work, and I've been using uh, a pin fight with a needle to do the inscribing. So I, I let the, the, the putty, the liquid putty uh, dry fully, layer cure. So what you see on this side, and to the bow, it's just uh, let set because um, it's easier, and then I scribe it. So that's what I'm up to. Um, working on a few Warhammer models as well. Nothing too crazy, just on the side. 
Um, so that's really it. Uh, not much else to show you. I'll do a proper update on the Tiger when all that's done, and we'll get down to get ready for painting. Um, I've also um, uh, what's going to say there? Oh yes, um, on, I'm going to ask some of you fighter lads because you seem to know. I'm using I'm going to be using Flaho colours. I have I'm going to be using reflective green for the green. But see the the kind of grey green colour for the camo. Would any of you be able to suggest to me a good or a mix of Flaho colours or Flaho col colour that I could use? Um, so I only have Flaho thinner at, at the moment and airbrush cleaner, so I need to keep it to that brand just in case um, it reacts differently to another paint. Um, I'm thinking it's using Flaho green grey. It seems to be quite near to it, and if it's a bit too dark, it'll just add a bit of sky grey into it. But um, if any of you could suggest to me what would be a good Flaho colour to use for that um, green grey camouflage. Um, thank you so much for looking and for watching. I hope you found this a bit useful. Um, so I'll, uh, I'm going to sign off now. So uh, watch out for those buses and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye bye.